I had a really informative, productive conversation on Facebook last week. <laughs> I feel like the diatribe could just end there, couldn't it? Like, like by itself, that seems like a newsworthy enough thing to devote an entire segment to, but it's true. It, it's still there on my wall, if you don't believe me. An honest-to-God productive disagreement on Facebook about politics, nonetheless. So, it starts when an occasional listener chimes in to ask why we spend so much time on our show talking about politics. She says, you know, honest question here, not trying to be a dick or anything, but you already have a show about politics, so why do you spend so much time talking about it on Scathing Atheist? Shouldn't that mostly be about atheism? Now, I'm, I'm paraphrasing and abridging here, but that's the gist of the post. And I'll admit, my first instinct was dismissive. And now, I wasn't dismissing the question so much as the premise. I mean, you know, if religion and politics were somehow kept separate with some, you know, rhetorical wall or something, one could talk about the former without talking about the latter. If they each sat on their own magisterial islands dealing with different problems in a never the twain show meet sort of way, not only could I avoid talking about them on the show, but I could probably avoid talking on the show. I pretty much have nothing to say. But luckily for our next several hundred scheduled releases, religion has way fewer qualms about wading into politics than I have about doing so on this show. And yeah, that's a true and justifiable answer. I mean, if we avoided talking about politics on this show, it would force us to cordon off the most impactful and dangerous aspects of the subject that we're focused on. But that's not really what she's asking, is it? Yeah, because when somebody says, why do you talk about politics so much? What they really mean is, why do you talk about politics too much. And I don't want to like straw man the question by pretending that there are two alternatives, you know, talk about politics exactly as much as we do versus never talk about politics at all. Because look, I, you know, by any standard, the show has gotten decidedly more political over the course of the presidential campaign and into Trump's nuclear dumpster fire of an administration. We recognize that, but it's not because Heath and Eli and I all of a sudden got way more liberal. You know, as religion moves deeper into American politics, the atheist watchdogs kind of have to follow. And, and there is no time in anyone's living memory when a presidential administration represented a greater threat to church-state separation or the integrity of rational thought or the validity of science on either side of the aisle. I mean, I consume a lot of atheist and skeptical podcasts and virtually every one of them that isn't inherently political has had to cut in in the last couple of weeks at some point and say, look, we know this show's not inherently political and we're not just like looking for new reasons to bash Trump, but so more and more often when we get together for our production meetings before we do this, you know, we go over the headlines, we find ourselves saying, hey, are we doing too many political stories? Are we talking about the Trump administration too much? And, and sometimes the answer is yes, but, but sometimes it's more like, well, should we leave out the one where he promised to ban an entire religion from entering the country, the one where he promised to federally fund religious schools, or the one where he said he'd support a law requiring people to celebrate Christmas? You know, we know we have conservative listeners. We know we have libertarian listeners. Can't imagine we have any Trump supporter listeners, but we realize that not everyone who listens to this show agrees with our politics. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we're politically monolithic on the show, but all of us lean left. So virtually all the commentary is coming from that direction. But on the other hand, virtually all the relevant abuses are coming from the other side. Let's not mistake one for the other. I mean, I get that that's not a prerequisite. I get that you can have conservative economic views or conservative views on social spending and not be an anti-evolution theocrat. You know, the fact that it was the American conservative political party that got in bed with the anti-evolution theocrats, that's not an inevitable outgrowth of conservative policy. It's just an unfortunate happenstance of history. But that's the history we live in. You know, in the history we live in, there is one political party in this country that has multiple anti-science, anti-rationality, anti-church state separation planks in its platform. If you tell me that congressman said that even if global warming turned out to be real, it wouldn't matter because God would take care of it. You don't have to tell me which political party he belonged to. I already know. No R's in parentheses need be wasted. If you tell me that a governor is enacting strong anti-pornography laws in the name of Jesus or, or trying to reinstate mandatory prayer in school or trying to declare the Bible the official state book, I already know what their official position on the corporate tax rate is. You know, that's not an argument for or against any corporate tax rate, sure, but it's an argument against that political party. You know, look, and not all the abuses come from the right. I got to be fair here. As a listener was kind enough to point out in the Facebook thread, we didn't hesitate to take the mayor of San Antonio to task when she said that the root cause of poverty was lack of Jesus. Hell, we talked about it in the headlines, then did a follow-up story about it the next week when she did her little bullshit non-apology. So yeah, when it comes across our plate, we'll bash the blue team too. It just doesn't come across our plate very often. And if we set out to make sure that we faulted both sides, that would work against the objectivity that we're hoping to maintain. If 99 out of 100 stories of egregious abuse of church-state separation come from one political party, 99% of our political stories should be bashing that political party. Anything else would betray a bias in favor 
of that party. And look, you don't get into atheist podcasting if you're trying to avoid being controversial, but we're not trying to be divisive. We ultimately want our show to be welcoming to conservative listeners, which is why we try to avoid political topics that don't have a general atheist or skeptical component. Now, look, we can strive for that all we want, but the only true metric of how good a job we're doing is the commentary from our conservative listeners. So we're going to continue to ask ourselves those questions. We're going to continue to try to get better, and we're going to continue to try to live up to our ideals. But if we started trying to avoid political topics to do it or, or wall off the topics that might piss off some percentage of our listeners, that would mean like voluntarily castrating our voices. And in the end, our voices are all we're bringing to the table.